Good morning, Michael here, <laughs> and our devotion today does um find me a bit guilty. Uh, sometimes just to be socially um, positive, uh, I I I can't stress the truth, <laughs> and um, you know it's a turned around and bit me, and. Um, to a point of like embarrassment but uh, let me then look at what a couple of verses in Psalms 12 has to say and then get to how Spurgeon expounds on them so from Psalms 12 verse 2 and 3 would read everyone utter lies to his neighbor with flattering lips and a double heart they speak May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that makes great boasts. And verse 6 reads, The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. So Spurgeon expounds on verse 2. They speak vanity everyone with his neighbor. They utter that which is vain to hear because of its frivolous, foolish, want of worth, vain to believe because it was false and lying, vain to trust to since it was deceitful and flattering, vain to regard for it lifted up the hero, filling him with proud conceit of himself. It is a sad thing when it is a fashion to talk vanity. Kami and Akadi is the old Scotch proverb. Give me a high sounding character and I will give you one. Compliments and fawning congratulations are hateful to honest men. They know that if they take, they must give them, and they scorn to do either. These accommodation bills are most admired by those who are bankrupt in character. Bad are the times when every man thus cajoles and cozens his neighbors. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. He who puffs up another's heart has nothing better than wind in his own. If a man extols me to my face, he only shows me one side of his heart, and the other is blacked with contempt for me, or foul with intent to cheat me. Flattery is a sign of the tavern where duplicity is the host. The Chinese consider a man of two hearts to be a very base man, and we shall be safe in reckoning, reckoning all flatterers to be such. While on verse 6, Spurgeon expounds, What a contrast between the vain words of man and the pure words of Jehovah. Man's words are yea and nay, but the Lord's promises are yea and amen. For truth, certainly, holiness, faithfulness, the words of the Lord are pure as well as refined silver. In the original, there is an allusion to the most severely purifying process known to the ancients, through which silver was passed when the greatest possible purity was desired. The dross was all consumed, and only the bright and precious metal remained. So clear and free from all alloy of error or unfaithfulness is the book of the words of the Lord. The Bible has passed through the furnace of persecution, literary criticism, philosophic doubt, and scientific discovery, and has lost nothing but those human interpretations which clung to it as alloy, the precious ore. The experience of saints has tried it in every conceivable manner, but not a single doctrine or promise has been consumed in the most excessive heat. What God's words are, the words of his children should be. If we would be godlike in conversation, we must watch our language 
and maintain the strictest purity of integrity and holiness in all our communications. Wow, this does speak to me going forward. <laughs> Trust I'll be a better saint. <laughs> Just to enjoy the reading of God's words at even the expositions. This is Michael here declaring Jesus is Lord. Until next time, be blessed.